skinny jeans. Welcome to Hey EW, I am RJ City, and my guest is Jerry Lynn Hey. Hi. The name Jerry, usually a nickname for a Gerald or Jerome, but your full first name is Jeremy. Why lie? It sounded too um, formal. Mm. Yeah, I wanted something a little more informal and relaxing. You yeah, know. But then the nickname of Jeremy should be Jer or Jerm or Remy. I have gotten Jer Bear. <laughs> From who? That's <laughs> my question. From some of the girl wrestlers. I and bet. So, no way, I'm, I'm Uncle Jerry to everybody. Oh, I, I get it. I right. see the angle here. If anything, I would have changed Lynn. Defend your choices. What, Lynn be the first name? I, I would have just dropped it completely. Oh, dropped? Just be, just be Jeremy? It's minimalist, but well, it's you know, nice. Alice in Chains at least wrote a song about me. There's another wrestler. Or I hope it wasn't me. Named Jerry Flynn. Okay, I know where you're going But here. his real name it was William Brenneman. Are you serious? It's not even See, close. Why would you pick? He didn't pick, he Wait. ripped you off. He saw your homework, he saw your name, he added an <laughs> F and went, that's it, we're good. So I should be flattered then, right? No, you should have heat. And he I, you, don't, heat. you know where the heat was? Every time you saw your name up on the board for a match, you had to go to the office and check in case someone erased the F mm. or added the F, yeah. so you never knew. And they would look at the board and say, hey, get the F out, they well, would say, right? I hope not. You ever confront him? No, I haven't. Because he's a tough guy. <laughs> He's a lot tougher than me. <laughs> You're from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah. So is Jesse Ventura. Does it bother you that he's more successful in wrestling and politics? Hmm, mm. that's a good question. Mm. Does it bother me mm -hmm. that he was more... No, the guy was very flamboyant and yeah. very charismatic. And he was actually, him paired up with uh, Gorilla Monsoon. Sure. Was some of my favorite commentary. Hey, your wrestling career is great. Or you, him you, paired up with, uh, you know, Bobby Heenan. You've or... done nothing in politics. No. Is that a shame you have? No. Okay. That's, that's right. like a badge of honor. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Very good. <laughs> Downtown Minneapolis, you ever get turned on by that bronze Mary Tyler Moore statue? You know, I've never seen it. What? Is it, what, what streets are on Nicollet? Or what street? It's in the middle of the town. I say, hey, where's the Mary Tyler Moore? And they just you know, point me I and I go. You know, I have never seen it. And I, down, I used to work downtown, so I was downtown mm -hmm. all the time. Downtown was a home away from home. I've been turned on by like three bronze statues in my life. This one, top of the list. Really? Oh my. Was the other one the Rocky one in Philly? No. No? Yeah, you, haven't, you haven't been to that one? No, there's a Kate Smith one I have to show you, and you're gonna love it. I better. You started wrestling in March 1988. Yes. Four months later, I was born. What was the world like? <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot, how, how can I put this? It wasn't so fast paced. There were no cell phones. Right. You know, no internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it was simpler times. Mm -hmm. yes. People were happier then. Yeah, I what think so, saying? to tell you the truth. You were the last challenger to the AWA championship. I never realized that, and then someone had posted that, and mm -hmm. I, I thought, really? And then the company closed. Why'd you kill the AWA? Because he wouldn't put the strap on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you shut it down, you call, you call the Minnesota Athletic Commission and you say, hey, this Vern guy is making people do squats in his barn. Now my buddies were the, the destruction crew, Mike Enos and Wayne yes, Bloom, and so I just called in a favor and they helped me. They destroyed, oh, they knocked oh, yeah, the oh, building yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. A lot of people say that you hit the ropes weird. Is everyone else wrong or are you? Well, it depends. Uh, because I know a lot of people flat back it. Uh -huh. And when you're first taught, I was always taught, hit it sideways. Mm -hmm. So you make sure you get your arm above the rope and you can grab it with the other hand too, yeah. for safety. Right. Well, there was one time where I was flat back in it mm -hmm. and I missed the top rope. The rope smacked me in the back of the head and I still shot out the ring like a, I was doing a backwards tope. And the fans went, and hey, so, there's the guy who killed the AWA. Yeah, <laughs> they did. I understand. Serves him right. So after that, it was always sideways. I wasn't taking any mm -hmm. chances. After so. the AWA closes, you move on to, you got Global Wrestling Federation, you're hitting the indies. You get into this two year long feud with the Lightning Kid, who originally I thought was the guy from the movie Powder, but it's Sean Waltman, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay, I know Sean Waltman. You have this feud, innovative matches, heavily influenced the modern style of today. Do you feel like a hypocrite now when you tell the kids to slow it down and take it easy? No, because that's what I was told. Yeah, but you didn't do it. Yes, I did. That was you slow? That, well, let me, th that was a time when 
Baron Von Raschke and Sheik Adnan were telling me, where's the fire? Slow it down. So I did slow it down to a certain extent so you could at least give people a chance to digest what just happened and have their say and their input. Right, I understand. That answer was very slow. And I understand. I'm sorry, I get long wind. I'm old. <sighs> right? right, you're a real Von Raschke. <laughs> You were in the 1992 film Crossing the Bridge, oh, starring Stephen Baldwin, David Schwimmer, and Jeffrey Tambor, for which you had to cut your hair. You want to tell everyone the scam you pulled? What's... Oh. Well, it wasn't... Uh, it's okay. a scam. It was a scam. It was an old carny <sighs> scam. So, since I had to get my hair cut off a little bit for the movie, we, I saved the hair, mm -hmm. and... Sean, X-Pac, mm -hmm. was the heel in our feud, yeah. so he had these certificates of authentication printed up, and we put a little bit of a hair in a bunch of Ziploc baggies and stapled that certificate to mm -hmm. it. And Mick Karch at the time had a weekend show called Saturday Night Review, and so we were able to go it's on like that show. It was male strippers? Community thing? Access. Oh, okay. No, not that kind of a review. You go on the show, yes. Um, so we did the angle on there where uh, Sean and his manager, the Golden Idol, jumped me and started cutting my hair. Mm -hmm. So the next, we would do that uh, monthly show at uh, Bar and Fridley, Ropers. It, at first it was George's and Fridley. I don't need to know Fridley. the directions. I'm I, telling you, I'm, you're getting the whole thing. Thanks. So anyway, <clears throat> this was a monthly show we had sold out all the time. So Sean went to the ring during the intermission as the heel mm -hmm. with bags of my hair to sell. Now. You sold them for $4 a bag, making a total of $80, meaning 20 people yes. have bags of your hair. Do you know yes. who they are? No, and I'm w worried that if they have voodoo dolls or mm -hmm. some doing voodoo spells with my hair. I tell you, Because I've fetish... had a lot of bad luck. I'll say. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. You worked in Mexico as Sultan Gargola. Want no, to explain false. that? No? That wasn't you? No. You're not just in not Mexico. saying that because it'll get you canceled. No, no. No, I only I used that gimmick for Michinoku's Mass Man tournament in Japan. Okay. But I didn't know at the time it was a Mexican wrestler, so I felt kind of bad that you ripped off another guy. They just said, "Hey, wear this mask." Yes. And you didn't know the difference. I didn't know. No. So you got scammed. That's yes. the karma for cutting the hair. Yeah. See how it works? Oh, great. You then wrestled for one of Jane Fonda's husbands. You know what company I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Under the name Mr. JL, which stood for what? Uh, Jushin Liger. Fantastic. It was a gimmick based on the Power Rangers. You had a full body suit and the, and the mask. Yes. But, but the Power Rangers never lost. Well, there was uh, discrepancies in how to use me. Yeah. Some people wanted to use me where the mask and the outfit mm -hmm. gave me superpowers. Mm -hmm. And some said, no, it's better if you just be yourself. So they were using me as both. Mm -mm. And, mm -mm. Oh, I'm getting it right now. My answer is, mm-mm. Oh, thank you. Know, you. <laughs> the Power Thanks Rangers also would jump into these big dinosaur machines and fight aliens. I think if you're basing a gimmick on the Power Rangers, you've missed a few key components. Well, it was supposed not supposed to be a blatant ripoff of the mm -hmm. Power Rangers. It was supposed to be like part Power Rangers, part alien-like. Well, it, it should have been a blatant ripoff, and it gets oh, so I, much worse. I, I In a 1995 it. match with Dean Malenko on TNT, <laughs> you break your arm and audibly yell, "Yeah, F like that." I, it came from here. I like to do it like on a Christmas story and just go. F F exactly what no, it was. Yeah, I, yeah, it was. I couldn't help it. It was just a natural reaction. The Warner people watch this show. You want to apologize? I'm sorry that I said the Effenheimer live on a Monday Nitro. Thank you. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, no, you can't say Monday Nitro. Do oh. you have any heat with <laughs> Dean? No, not at all. Really? No. Because you know who his father <clears throat> trained? Sean. No. X-Pac. Jerry Flynn. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, now there's heat. Uh -huh. Now exactly. there's heat. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Very well done. Then you worked for a Hey man, mm -hmm. an extreme Ew. hey man. Ew. You, you know who I'm talking about? Yes, I know. Okay, okay, good, good, good. You no, got into good. this feud with RVT. Mm -hmm. Big feud, people loved it. He's here sometimes. When you see him in the hall, do you do your old standoff? Do you go, ah, like that? <laughs> no, you know what? I might next time I see him. I think it would be great. He was Except the whole. Except he kicks fast, and then I'm slow now, so he might just instinctively go, wop, and I, I'm done. He was the whole effing show. Yes. Then you changed your name to the new no, F and I didn't change it. It was given to you? Yes. It was uh, in Asbury Park uh -huh. during our pay-per-view match, our yes. first pay-per-view match. And after a sequence of moves, I was getting ready to climb the corner, and a whole section of the building started chanting new F and show. Because they saw Lorne Michaels, the new show. 
when he left Saturday Night Live in 1984 and one of his few televised failures. Do I have to thank Lauren, too? I think so. Okay, thank you, Lauren. Great, great. In 2000, you beat Steve Carino so badly that you dipped your hands into the blood on his face, wiped it on your face, and then on your stomach wrote, die. Well, I just wanted to let the fans and Steve know that I meant business. It's a little much, don't you think? No, that, no, Turned no, into listen, like performance art. This is like well, the Guggenheim all of a sudden. You're a I, regular Marina Abramovic. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I was coming up with the idea, I was sitting in a bar with a friend of mine who was a fan and he was in a death metal band and I told him about doing the war paint. He's, he's the one who first said, that's not good enough. This is ECW, this is extreme. Wow. And so I had to take, you know, kick it up a notch. What I don't understand is where you hit a blood capsule that big. During your promos, oh, you would it. incorporate death metal vocals. Yes. Right? Can, yeah. can you give everybody an example? It's been bit? a while. I, I got to warm up and tune up. You, know? you would be, oh, I'm going to beat you. Like you go like that, right? You're pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Not only has that genre never been mainstream, but didn't you risk the long term health of your vocal cords? Probably. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wasn't too worried because after all the concerts I've been to throughout the years, I'm surprised I'm not deaf anymore. Still, you know. Wouldn't it have been better if you picked another genre to work into your promos? Maybe a, like a, a doo-wop? You're gonna die. You know, You're gonna die. Wouldn't that have been so That much was nicer? done already, the Spirit Squad. They could have been a perfect <sighs> duo. You, you just have a list of names that you're going to drop that we're going to have to cut out of this completely? Uh, Do you know I what company we're working for? <laughs> Check your past, man. <laughs> Former nice person Lance Storm said, and I quote, that you are an Academy Award winning supporting actor, one of the greatest actors of our time who was just never cast in that lead role, which is interesting because, and I mean this in the best way, you look like Richard Dreyfus. I don't, and I'm not saying okay. bad Richard Dreyfuss, I'm saying healthy, you mean, young, happy Richard. Oh. Richard Dreyfuss wishes he could look like you now. The, and I don't like the panties on the, is that that one? Really that nice. Richard Dreyfuss? Yes. 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 yes, yes, And he won an Oscar for The Goodbye Girl. So maybe Lance Storm should just go see more movies. So, well, that's a real compliment then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I guess it is. Sorry. <laughs> Dave Meltzer <laughs> described you as one of the most underrated workers of the last quarter century, and he was the one rating you, so he did it on purpose. But that's just his personal opinion. It's yes. not like... Uh... Now, I think it would have a lot more meaning if someone like Harley Race mm. or Bobby Heenan or yes. someone like and that... Yes, they would have said, that's the guy who Flair. killed the AWA. Oh, God. <laughs> You There's retired, no winning with you. You retired 25 years to the day that you started. When are you going to ruin it with a return match? I, I don't think I can. Come on, let's just throw it all away, like they always what do. What do you think that return match should be? Well, I've had several people ask me. I'll tell you, in 2022 on Dynamite, Chris Jericho gave you a tombstone pile driver on the stage. Yeah. You yeah. get home the next day, your wife says what? Uh, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then she puts on her copy of Crossing the Bridge and just goes to sleep. Well, after the first five, five minutes, I think, that's part when with the, the scene was okay, in. Yeah. That's nice. And I got beat up by Jason Gedrick. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. Off, yeah. Offset. You are now often a judge for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship matches. What, what are you writing on that piece of paper? You just doodling and then you pick who you like? Well, it depends if fans are close enough to see my paper. Right, and then you go, nice hammerlock. That sometimes, routine? you know, I'll look over at Dean's or something, and I see a grocery list being written out. Right. So, you never and know. And Dean's writing, I miss Jerry Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> you are also on the Ring of Honor Board of Directors. What's the secret to booking a banger? <sighs> you tell me. Oh, yeah, I'm, I've been banging them out left and right. I'm going to list Zoics? some people. Tell me who in Ring of Honor you'd like to see them face. Okay. Okay? All right. Keenan Ivory Wayans. Ooh. I'd like to see him face Toa from Gates of Agony. Very nice. Damon Wayans. Well, we've got to put him in there with Khan then. Excellent. Uh, Sean and Marlon Wayans. That'd be a tag. Um, oh, um, the Embassy. Really nice. And finally, Kim Wayans. Oh, uh, let's see. Athena. Wow, very nice. Well, this has been a mosh. And you know what? For, for fabricated nostalgia's sake, 
Let's do a little death metal vocals, but instead of insulting each other, let's let's spin it. Let's compliment each other. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Your show is very fabulous. Uh, you look like Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> let's do that. One, two, three. Death metal. Richard Dreyfus. One, two, three. Richard Dreyfus. That'll trend very well. <coughs> I don't know how you did it. <laughs>